So today's topic is diet in cardiovascular diseases from your dietetics textbook. It's chapter 16, page number 320. Chapter 16, page number 320. Those who are joining late, please help them out with the page numbers. Chapter 16. 320 diet in cardiovascular diseases so we'll start the class so cvd stands for cardiovascular diseases and chd stands for coronary heart diseases okay so cvd is an umbrella term that we use for all the heart related diseases including coronary heart diseases will come under it's a subtype. Coronary heart disease is a subtype of CVD. Okay. So cardiovascular diseases is a group of conditions including angina, like angina pectoris, that is chest pain. Okay. Myocardial infarction, heart attack, heart failure, cardiac arrhythmias, heart valve related problems that is genetically inherited by birth. You have certain defects in the heart. Okay. Heart valves, etc. So these all come under cardiovascular diseases, okay? And C uh, CHD, coronary heart disease, is a type of cardiovascular disease, okay? So uh, CVD, it affects not just your heart, but all your blood vessels, okay? Your arteries, veins, capillaries, they all come under the vascular system, okay? Uh, blood circulation and vascular system. So it CVD, uh, the CVD disorders not just affects your heart, but it also affects your blood vessels as well. Okay, and mainly it affects the CHD, coronary heart disease. So heart is also an organ. Heart also requires blood supply. Okay, so the the vessels that supply blood to the heart. Okay, that is coronary arteries. Coronary arteries gives oxygenated blood to your heart. Okay, so most of the heart blocks etc are seen in the coronary arteries. Okay, so coronary arteries are the ones that perfuse the heart muscle and when there, there is any blockage, okay. Yeah, CHD can also be hereditary based on your lifestyle. Genetically, you can you can get CHD as well, okay. So coronary arteries are the arteries that give blood supply to the heart. And when there is a blockage in coronary heart arteries, it comes under the umbrella term of coronary heart diseases. Okay, is it clear to all CVD and CHD? Next, coming to coronary heart disease. Okay, what exactly it is? You can see here the heart, coronary arteries. They completely uh, roll up the heart. Okay, the coronary arteries give blood supply throughout the heart muscles. So this is a normal healthy coronary artery with without any plaque. Okay, here this is the abnormal blood flow because of the presence of plaque. Plaque is the fats that have been accumulated over a period of time, and after certain years, it's not just the fat that has deposited there. Certain smooth muscle tissues, certain vasculature vasculature means what blood circulation okay so plaque will also start receiving blood circulation smooth muscle tissues etc so it forms a, a a stretch of tissue itself within the arteries and it will obstruct your blood flow you can see here in the image how the growth of the plaque you can see here uh, a plaque is not just um if it is visible okay you are not just seeing a yellow patch you can see some smooth muscles as well okay and if smooth muscles are present definitely there is a vas vasculature in that okay blood circulation is there within that okay so it narrows down the area which the blood has to flow through the artery and reduced blood blood flow will lead to reduced oxygen supply to the end tissue and if it is completely blocked it will lead to necrosis of that end tissue okay and that leads to myocardial infarction that is heart attack when the blood supply is so less so less that the entire area will the, the heart muscles will no longer 
get oxygen supply and once you can imagine the the uh, the areas the cells the tissues which will stop getting the oxygen supply it will undergo necrosis okay it will eventually die off okay so that leads to heart attacks myocardial infarction is it clear how uh, myocardial infarction the how the pathology manifests into myocardial infarction Next, coming to the prevalence, okay? So all your CVDs, cardiovascular diseases, they are predictable. You can predict based on the, usually based on the lifestyle a person is leading, okay? Their BMI, okay, overweight or obese, all these factors, do, you, do, do they have any lifestyle, uh, bad behaviors like smoking, alcoholism, okay, drug abuse, and genetically, if you see their family history as well, if, if both the parents have a history of CVD, if both the grandparents from both the sides, okay, they have a history of stroke or any CVD, there are high chances it is, it is passed down into the family as well, okay. So genetically, is a person predisposed? Uh, are they having a, a very sedentary lifestyle with no physical activity? Okay, so based on all these factors, CVDs are highly predictable, okay? And these are the leading cause of deaths throughout the world, not just in India, but throughout the world, cardiovascular diseases are the leading cause of death, okay? It is highly predictable. It is preventable once you know uh, that the person has a risk of CVD based on lifestyle changes, based on dietary management, Okay, you can prevent the uh, myocardial infarction or stroke to an extent, okay? And it is treatable as well. So these are the, uh, at the pie chart, you can look, uh, look at the number of deaths that worldwide we see based on different disorders, okay? Organ-related disorders, cardiovascular diseases are the top ranking disorders which lead to death, cancer being the second, okay? NCD is non-communicable diseases, okay? Other NCDs are the non-communicable diseases. Usually lifestyle disorders will also come under non-communicable diseases, which cannot spread from one person to another. So understand the cholesterol results, okay? Once you do your plasma, serum cholesterol level checked, etc. If your serum cholesterol levels are less than 200 mg per deciliter, okay, you are healthy. It's a desirable level of cholesterol one has to maintain, okay? If your uh, level is between 200 to 239 or 240 mg per deciliter, then you are borderline, okay? You have to immediately do some lifestyle changes, and high level, you have to start treating yourself. You will be put on certain medications, okay? Strict diet, dietary management has to be followed once you cross the high level demarcation of cholesterol. The, this cholesterol is the TDL, okay? Total cholesterol. This is the range, this table is given in your textbook. It's on page number 321, table 16.1. It's the same table. You just go through it, you will understand different types of cholesterol, LDL, HDL, triglycerides, okay? LDL is the uh, the low uh, the low density lycoprotein, LDL, okay? That is the cause, uh, that is the major uh, stress giver when it comes to cholesterol, okay? High levels of LDL leads to cardiovascular diseases. But higher level of HDL, that is high density lipoprotein, that is good cholesterol. Okay, if it goes beyond below 50 mg per deciliter, measurements are again in mg per deciliter. It means your chances of cardiovascular diseases are high. The ta same table is given on page number 321. You can refer it later. No need to buy hard the values, just remember the value which I have shown in the previous slide. This one, this is important, okay? The total cholesterol, mg per deciliter in your, uh, in your uh, analysis, serum lipid level analysis, this is important. 
no need to by heart the entire uh, entire table if you if you can read this value you can definitely diagnose that the person has high cholesterol next coming to the risk factors so risk factors of cardiovascular diseases are categorized into four main category in your textbook they have given all the risk factors in categories okay so we'll go category uh, category wise so first category category 1 cigarette smoking high saturated fat diet high cholesterol diet elevated low density ldl cholesterol hypertension that is high bp and thrombogenic factor thrombo uh, thrombus people from the medical background could you please uh, give in the uh, chat box what do you mean by thrombus and you're explaining it to the commerce students okay who are not from the science background can, how can you explain thrombus blood blood clot but where the position of the bl blood clot is the main in the definition of thrombus So we all know that see when, whenever you get hurt, okay, whenever you start uh, start to bleed, you when you get a scratch or you, when you get hurt, okay, the blood clots within start, will start clotting within few seconds, okay, because of clotting factors, etc. Okay, and imagine the clot this this clot forming inside your blood body, especially inside your blood vessels. That is thrombus. Okay, blood clots that forms within your blood uh, blood vessel and it is circulated it doesn't stay in one place usually it along with the blood it it gets circulated it moves from one point to another okay and when that whenever the thrombus reaches your pulmonary arteries or veins that's the uh, that that is highly lethal okay what happens people who are from the medical background what happens once the once this thrombus this clot okay travels through the blood circulation and gets lodged in your lungs through the pulmonary circulation what happens Obviously, the, when the thrombus will block any area, the, any tissue, okay, any tissue that is supposed to see the circulation and that vessel has been blocked, the tissue will start to die off. And just imagine parts of your lung is dying off. Okay, parts of your lung is drying or dying off. Immediately, the person will not be able to breathe properly, okay, and they will die. Okay, a ischemic attack will take place. Okay, the person will die immediately. That is the risk of thrombus okay and thrombus forms how the pla the plague which we will see that in the coming slides the plague that is forming the inside the blood vessel that will break off okay after a point of time it may break off on its own or because of the high blood pressure okay and the contraction of the vessels it may break off and uh, it forms a thrombus while in the circulation and this clot will go and lodge its, uh, lodge itself somewhere in the body part and there you the person will suffer from severe severe uh, life crisis so for the first factor cigarette smoking so the people who had myocardial infarction that is anyone who had suffered from heart attack okay and before the first attack uh, they had the, the habit of cigarette smoking but soon after the first attack they stopped smoking it is seen that the risk of the second attack completely reduces Okay, so as soon as you stop stop smoking, okay, and if you completely avoid smoking, uh, it definitely enhances your heart health. Okay, uh, uh, even after you, if even if you have undergone myocardial infarction, heart attack, once you stop smoking, okay, uh, soon after the attack, uh, the chance of second attack reduces. Okay. Then high saturated, high cholesterol diet, for example, having a lot of uh, animal fat like egg yolk butter okay meat fat etc high uh, high amount of saturated fatty acids like use of ghee and too much of coconut oil in your diet okay these things will lead to high saturated fat diet high cholesterol diet 
okay it will uh, amplify your cholesterol levels especially animal based um, for especially for non vegetarians and for vegetarians who indulge in having a lot of food that is fried in ghee okay any form of ghee buffalo ghee cow's ghee okay so because vegetarians do tend to use uh, ghee and dairy products that so that's why and some vegetarians also do tend to eat eggs okay so if you indulge in a lot of egg yolk or ghee based diet even for vegetarians the cardiac health risk increases okay next is elevated uh, low density lipoprotein that is see once your ldl uh, ldl value increases automatically your hdl will come down so it's like an uh, it is inversely proportional okay the relationship between ldl and hdl is inversely proportional when one rises the other automatically goes down okay so with elevated uh, ldl uh, ldl levels definitely you are in a risk category then your hypertension uh, hypertension is not just uh, an independent factor for cardiovascular diseases coronary heart diseases but also for stroke okay you are not just putting your heart health at the arteries of the heart at risk but also you are putting the arteries of the brain at risk okay stroke uh, there are different types of stroke okay ischemic stroke uh, and the bleeding stroke in which the artery in the brain just it will just burst open okay that will lead to stroke okay in ischemic stroke again there is a thrombus a clot that has traveled to uh, to your uh, arteries that supply blood to the uh, brain okay and it has blocked uh, it has blocked the supply to certain parts of your brain what will happen the block has created no blood flow towards certain tissues of your brain what will happen to the brain only certain parts okay what will happen any guesses yes ischemia is the ischemia is the medical terminology okay the necrosis okay necrosis means that the brain cells will die off and is it reversible is it reversible anything that happens to your central nervous system to the tissues and cells of your central nervous system is it reversible it's not reversible okay any injury that takes place to your central nervous system that hurts your neurons okay the cell, that neurons are the structural and functional unit of your central nervous system okay so any injury to the neurons any uh, any infarction to the neurons or the tissues of the central nervous system it is irreversible damage okay so thrombogenic fa factors see you have around 13 to 14 clotting factors i don't remember exactly uh, anyone from the medical background could you just uh, remind in the chat box how many cl clotting factors we humans have human body how many is it 13 or 14 okay so so we have 13 clot clotting factors 13 clotting factors means there are 13 elements that come into play for your blood to clot okay interior clot or exterior whatever okay even when you get hurt okay when you scratch yourself you get hurt okay, uh, some blood will come out uh, come out okay and after a few seconds, within few seconds, the clotting procedure starts. Okay, with uh, uh, path, like uh, based on your physiology. Okay, immediately your clotting mechanism starts within few seconds. But you will see the scab forming later. Okay, within a minute or two, or it may takes one hour or something. The scab form. You will see the scab later. Okay, so this takes place because of thirteen clotting factors that are there in human body. Okay. So some sometimes these clotting factors are misappropriated in the blood circulation itself. That could also lead to cardiovascular diseases. Sometimes some clotting factors are too active. Okay, so that's why you get too much of thrombus, that is blood clots within the circulation. Okay, fibrogen. Okay, these are Christmas factor fibro, fibrogen. These all are clotting factors. So increase increase in this uh, any of the clotting factors could also lead to high chance of thrombus formation and that leads to other pathophysiologies 
clotting factors see clotting factors are elements okay they are basically elements that help your blood to clot you know what is blood clotting right when we say the blood coagulation or blood clotting okay so blood uh, blood will not clot on its own blood circulation blood uh, already has these 13 elements within itself that helps to clot whenever there is an injury okay to prevent excessive bleeding it's a body's defense mechanism to prevent the uh, the person dying out of exsanguination okay so we have this clotting factors within our blood circulation that helps to form blood clot whenever you get hurt okay Next, coming to category two, first is diabetic mellitus, diabetes mellitus. Uh, what do you think the risk with diabetes mellitus? Does it increase the CVD risk having diabetes once you are diabetic? Definitely it increases, okay? Not just CVD, but also other renal failures, renal failure failures, central nervous, uh, nervous system like uh, issues like neuropathy, okay? Retinopathy, neuropathy. CVD, renal failures, arthritis, okay, these all things will increase once you are diabetic, okay, and it applies for the pre-diabetic people also, those who are pre-diabetic, it applies for them as well, okay. Then coming to physical inactivity, sedentary lifestyle. And those who have a very low cardio respiratory fitness, because those who do not do any cardio related activities in their uh, lifespan, they have a higher risk of getting cardiovascular health disorders. Because they are already at a higher risk of gaining too much of weight. Then low HDL cholesterol, as I mentioned, the relationship between LDL and HDL is inversely proportional. As soon as one rises, the other comes down in the blood serum levels okay next we have obesity with increased adiposity adiposity means increased amount of fat that you accumulate in your body okay as, as soon as you get from overweight you turn obese etc the risk of chd amplifies along with chd hypertension sedentary lifestyle glucose intolerance your uh, risk of diabetes all these conditions will also be amplified Please put down the full form of LDL and HDL in the chat box. Then postmenopausal status. Once a woman has attained menopause, her risk of cardiovascular diseases increases. Okay. Once a woman has attained menopause, her risk of cardiovascular diseases increases. Which hormone do you think protects the woman from cardiovascular diseases when she is menstruating, when she's in the reproductive age group? Which is the hormone that protects the woman from cardiovascular diseases? Estrogen has the direct effect on increasing your HDL, okay? Estrogen, women's hormone estrogen has a direct effect on increasing the HDL, okay? So automatically when the HDL increases, in nature, the LDL, which is bad cholesterol, it decreases. That's how a woman's heart is protected during her entire reproductive age, okay? So that's the reason why once she hits menopause okay we have to give the woman hrt what what do you mean by hrt people from medical background what is the full form of hrt yes hormonal replacement therapy okay Hormonal replacement therapy begins even before you uh, hit menopause. As soon as you get the symptoms of menopause, like hot flashes, mood swings, okay, irregular periods, cramps, etc. These are the 
symptoms of menopause you know the menopause is approaching so from that moment onwards estrogen therapy will be given so that uh, because see certain after certain age definitely age plays a factor of increasing your heart health and along with that when you are facing your menopause okay uh, it multiplies your risk okay so just to control that hrt will be given so that the heart health of the woman is safeguarded okay and not just heart health, uh, even hypertension, okay? Estrogen, estrogen controls your hypertension as well. It, it dilates your blood vessel. Estrogen is able to uh, dilate and constrict. Dilate means it relaxes, relaxes your blood vessels. Constrict means it uh, your blood vessel contracts, okay? So estrogen helps to keep your smooth uh, uh, muscles in your uh, blood vessel dilated. Okay, when the blood vessels are dilated, there is good blood flow throughout the blood vessel. You will not suffer from hypertension. You will not suffer from high BP. Uh, BP. So this is the reason why estrogen protects women against. It is given through pills. Horm hormonal replacement therapy is given through pills. Oral, oral uh, HRT is available. And nowadays, inject injectables are also available. You can uh, self-inject, just like how you use insulin and, and all. W women can self-inject, okay? And some patches are also available. Are you aware of that? People from the medical background, are you aware of patches which uh, for which you do not have to eat the medicine? You just have to just apply the patches. Patches already has the hormones, okay? Yeah, so patches are also available. You just have to apply the patches on your arm, or on your stomach, anywhere where it is not visible. Okay, you can apply the patches. HRT is available in that form as well. In oral pills. Yeah, they are they are completely safe under the guidance of a gynecologist. Under the guidance of the gynecologist, they are completely safe. They help you to attain menopause without severe symptoms. Okay, sometimes the menopausal symptoms could be very severe, even to treat that, just to give a symptomatic. Uh, management you can't delay the uh, menopause but do a symptomatic management yes yeah, so certain painkillers also are uh, you get patch forms which the skin can absorb it as it is okay now coming to the category three psychological factors what would be the uh, examples here for psychological factors Depression, stress, anxiety, personality disorders, instability, emotional instability, grief, isolation, okay? Once you are di diagnosed with any of the mental health issues, okay, that person definitely will have higher risk of getting cardiovascular disorders, okay? any of the mental health con uh, conditions, even PTSD, okay? Elevated triglyceride levels. Give me some uh, examples of food that increases your triglyceride. Food that are notorious to be high in triglycerides. Animal fat, butter, ghee, bakery products, yes, fried food, processed, overly processed food, saturated fatty acid, dense oils, egg yolks. Okay. These are the examples of yeah, refined food. Anything that is made up of refined flour, okay, they all are examples of high triglyceride rich food, okay. Elevated lipoprotein, see, a lipoprotein is what? It's a mixture of lipids. Uh, it's a mix of lipid as well as protein. So you will not find, uh, like naturally, humans don't have high lipoprotein, okay? Too much of lipoprotein in your circulation is an indicator that your body is trying to take away, scavenge away all the excess lipid that is being given to your circulation, 
okay so that's the uh, ha having too much of lipoprotein is the uh, is the way of body trying to get rid of as many as fats possible from your blood circulation so an elevated levels of lipoproteins in your blood blood it indicates that you already have high cholesterol levels okay your body is overcompensating with increased amounts of lipoprotein to take the uh, lipids away from the circulation deposit it on your tissues into your adipose tissues etc okay overly processed food means uh, the food that for example when you bake a cake etc okay uh, you whip uh, you used whipped creams okay you used uh, sweet uh, you use sugar okay you used refined flour etc okay and certain uh, cooking uh, steps you you have to boil the item first then you may have to saute it then you put it in the batter and then you uh, like for example samosa samosa is an example of an overly processed food okay you pre prepare the filling separately then you uh, make the batter okay uh, then you make the dough out of it and uh, and again put the already cooked vegetable uh, fillings inside the uh, dough and then you deep fry it okay this is this is an example of an overly processed food okay simple processed food is just just steam it boil it okay or mildly saute it that is a single simple processed food okay overly processed food means lot many cooking steps are required to make make that particular uh, particular cuisine okay yeah ready to eat items as well anything that is deep fried anything that is deep fried automatically automatically comes under the overly processed category okay using air fryers are the better alternatives so that is the reason why increased uh, uh, elevated lipoproteins may indicate you have cholesterol related issues okay lipoprotein means what is the function of lipoprotein your lipids uh, the uh, the fats and uh, whatever fats you eat okay that will not travel in your blood as it is it requires protein to take it from one end and to dump it at other end okay wherever it is required okay so that is a re re reason uh, you have to indulge in a protein rich diet okay not just to not just to repair your tissues not just to keep looking uh, uh, young not just to develop your muscle okay it is also for your cardiac health it's also for your heart health you have to indulge in a protein rich diet okay we'll come to the dietary um, management in that you will see next coming to elevated homocysteine so homocysteine is an amino acid okay it's a protein cysteine means it's a protein so uh, this homocysteine uh, will be broken down um, and the amino because since homocysteine is made up of different kinds of amino acids once it breaks down these different amino acids will be used up by your body for different kind of functions okay so whenever you have high homocysteine levels it is an indicator that either you have certain vitamin b deficiency okay uh, or you have uh, heart related issues and if you do not if you do not treat your high homocysteine levels it can lead to stroke it can lead to heart attack okay so homocysteine is a protein which is supposed to undergo go breakdown okay it is supposed to undergo breakdown in your blood circulation so that the amino acids can be used up from, by your body but too much of homocysteine in your blood uh, it will not undergo the same kind of so the same rate of metabolism okay so it will just keep on increasing homocysteine will keep on increasing and eventually it can lead to stroke okay it can lead to myocardial infarction heart attacks okay dementia it can affect your brain health as well okay next is oxidation and antioxidants uh, free that is free radical damage okay uh, every function in your body if whatever uh, chemical reactions your that is taking place inside your body free radicals are released as a byproduct okay and if you do not have antioxidant rich diet in your uh, in your uh, nutrition definitely the free radicals will go and attack your blood vessels free radicals can attack the insides of your blood vessels if the blood vessels are getting damaged from inside it is very easy for the plaque to get accumulated 
okay it is easy very easy for the cholesterol plaque fats to get accumulated in that area of the blood vessels where it has undergone free radical damage okay it will get uh, it will be uh, uh, like it will get deposited there it will fo form atherosclerosis and further it will lead to cardiovascular diseases okay so antioxidant rich food can help in reducing your cardio uh, risk of cardiovascular diseases then alcoholism severe uh, like too much of consumption of alcoholic beverages will definitely lead to increased risk of cvd chd and individuals who uh, it's not like if you completely stop drinking alcohol but if you have mild to moderate consumption levels of alcohol it has shown to decrease your cardiovascular risk for example can you uh, name an example of a most popular alcoholic drink which is known to reduce the heart um, heart uh, disorders risk it's red wine it's specifically red wine okay not just wine it's red wine okay beer will lead to heart uh, uh, beer will lead to uh, issues with the cardiac health okay because beer uh, see uh, have you heard about beer belly have you heard about beer belly beer belly is very common am among people who are very much indulgent in beer as a beverage and no, not other alcoholic beverages but uh, pot belly or beer beer belly is commonly associated with increased risk of heart uh, heart uh, heart disorders because the fat that a person accumulates on the uh, just just below their chest okay or just on their abdominal uh, abdominal region the fat, if they are fat or they have, they have accumulated lots of fats only on their abdominal region it means they, uh, they have high cholesterol okay it means they have high cholesterol and definitely the risk of cvd is higher in those people especially the people who have apple shaped body okay the apple shaped body means what you have accumulated a whole lot of fat on the on your torso okay specifically the uh, your abdominal region beer is usually prescribed or uh, like it's not prescribed uh, it's recommended okay it's not prescribed beer is recommended for kidney stones okay because beer is kind of a diuretic okay beer acts as a diuretic when whenever you drink beer it uh, increases your tendency to urinate okay so those who have mild to moderate kidney stones for them the nephrologist usually recommends them to drink a beer if possible okay it it acts as a diuretic just a just a small can of beer a day okay uh, as soon as the uh, it is resolved okay once it gets resolved resolved the stones get resolved they do not have to continue it okay so okay, beers are recommended because it acts as diuretic okay? not not for any other purpose diet for cardiovascular disease we'll come to that later okay you have to take this uh, the topic okay so next coming to uh, category four age so with uh, from middle age onwards middle age onwards and when you cross 50 55 years your risk of cbd is higher okay but nowadays we can't uh, we can't say it's with age because we are seeing young people as young as who are in their late 20s early 30s okay they they are passing away because of heart attacks okay it usually leads to their lifestyle that the stress factors in in one's life okay and at a very from a very young age one is a lot uh, today's generation is pretty much stressed out okay they are facing their midlife crisis etc pretty sooner as compared to the generations that were 20 years older two decades back okay so we are seeing uh, most of the heart attacks myocardial infarction infarctions etc happening in young adults as well okay then uh, based on gender based on sex which sex do you think has the higher naturally higher risk of getting heart diseases men have men has by twice okay double the risk of heart diseases as compared to women and but after uh, menopause the risk is increased in women 
and by the age of 70 okay by the age of 70 the risk is pretty much same for both men and women okay so as long uh, as a woman gets her periods she is protected after that after as soon as she gets her menopause her risk increases than men and by the age of 70 okay when they uh, when they are sentinel kind of age group uh, the risk is same for men and women okay then for uh, then in family history definitely uh, in some uh, some families are susceptible to hyperlipidemia hyperlipidemia means high amounts of fats and cholesterol in the blood okay high lipid levels in the blood that is hyperlipidemia so definitely cvd and chd can be passed down from from the previous generation to the next generation okay so your tendency your tendency and your risk of getting cvd depends completely on the heart, heart, cardiac health of your parents and grandparents men do not have as much of estrogen as how females have okay that's the reason why definitely men uh, may, uh, even uh, even in men you will find estrogen okay and in females also you will find testosterone okay it, it's seen both the both the uh, male and female uh, hormones are seen in both the genders but in very trace amount okay uh, estrogen is in very trace amount in males testosterone is also in, in, uh, is a very trace amount in females okay that uh, that is present okay but it is not uh, estrogen is not present to an amount that can protect men from cardiovascular diseases okay it's not that much abundant okay uh, see the health of your vessels okay how healthy your vessels are that depends on the genes that depends on the genes okay and how the intestines can absorb fat that also depends on what kind of genes you have inherited definitely lifestyle lifestyle the food pattern the food habits that is learned behavior that is learned behavior that the child learns watching and looking and following the family practices but apart from that what the uh, what anatomy the child has inherited okay usually the health of the blood vessels okay how susceptible your blood vessels are to internal damage from free radicals okay these things are inherited okay these cannot be changed you have to modify your diet throughout your entire lifetime so that the risk does not uh, consume you. Is it clear to all, all the categories of risk factors? No, men cannot, uh, men cannot be given hormones like estrogen because that will lead to some physical uh, manifestation of feminine characteristics and which is not uh, usually well tolerated among uh, the gender society which we live in okay for example if a woman is put on testosterone definitely she will start uh, having a deeper voice she will start growing uh, like she will start having facial hairs okay uh, her uh, sex drive will increase along with that her anger issues will increase okay these are the physical manifestations what a hormones can bring into one's life the same can take place in a uh, in a uh, in a man as well okay with increased estrogen uh, his breast may get larger okay so and his voice may get softer etc so hormonal therapy is only recommended for the same sex okay of of what that hormone belongs to it's not given to the other sex So next coming to the development of atherosclerosis okay the role of fat in development of atherosclerosis atherosclerosis is the disease condition you can see here on uh, on the image the last uh, image which you can see here this is full full blown atherosclerosis okay this is the part where a person will definitely suffer from either myocardial infarction or stroke wherever this kind of clot has took place okay but it develops from this uh, this particular 
time period and what do you think from which age onwards atherosclerosis will begin which age group onwards atherosclerosis will begin from childhood okay from childhood not just adolescent from your childhood what kind of eating patterns you had since your childhood, okay, that will determine the future risk of atherosclerosis, okay? Kids who are obese during their childhood, okay, they have, they have a higher tendency of getting any CVD disor disorders when they turn into young adults, okay? So the, uh, the deposition of fat, inside your inside the vessel lumen lumen is this hole which you see okay the uh, the hole through which the blood circulates that is called the lumen okay so as soon as the uh, fat gets deposited over a period of time you can see it will not take place within a day or a year it takes years and years of fat accumulation for atherosclerosis to develop okay and along with that if you have lifestyle disorders or lifestyle behaviors like smoking, sedentary lifestyle, no physical activity, okay? This will amplify uh, the speed of fat deposition, okay? Which leads to atherosclerosis. So this is the fatty streak phase. This can take place at young, even in young children, this phase can begin if they are obese, overweight, okay? Uh, HRT is recommended only when you have severe symptoms, okay? As, as soon as you get, uh, you you know, you understand that you are undergoing menopausal symptoms, it is recommended you go and visit the gynecologist, okay? Because sometimes it's not always the physical manifestation of certain signs and symptoms of menopause. Some women go into severe depression, okay? They go into social isolation kind of behavior when menopause is approaching okay it's not always the physical uh, physical uh, approach of symptoms it, it can, could be mental breakdown as well so it's always recommended to visit a gynecologist if the woman is feeling depressed okay she's socially isolating after the age of 45 or so with the help of with if the uh, if the family members have noticed these changes in her behavior it's recommended to take her to a gynecologist get a psych uh, psychologist reference as well and get a consultation done from both these experts. And then a treatment plan is suggested, okay? So the fatty streak phase, this, this is the initial phase. From here, it is reversible when you do your lifestyle management, okay? Uh, like uh, start running, start doing cardio, cardio exercises. It is reversible, okay? Here, the plague grows. The lining of the artery is damaged, okay? Lining of the artery can be damaged even before the plague has become, um, has, has been deposited, okay? It is usually, give me a moment. So the plague formation will not always begin. Uh, like uh, uh, your arteries could be damaged even before the fat deposition has started. It's usually because of the free radical damage or genetically you may have uh, acquired, a, uh, acquired a gene that gives you a predisposition of fat disposal, okay? So uh, after a few years, the plague will become larger and larger and it has already gained smooth muscles, okay? It has already gained blood circulation. Even the, the, pla pla the plague starts behaving like a living tissue. It has smooth muscle cells, okay? Uh, and it has uh, blood cells. It has blood circulation. It has capillaries, okay? So it starts acting like a living tissue. And after a certain 
point of time after few years etc it will rupture okay and once it ruptures definitely the blood circulation what was inside that blood will also come out okay and that blood will turn into a clot okay the blood that was supposed to circulate within the plague which was giving uh, oxygen etc towards the plague that blood will rupture out it will form into a clot okay it will form into thrombus and that clot will travel through the blood circulation and cause some other kind of lethal disorders okay Uh, what do you mean by MR here in your question? Please mention that as well. So this is how atherosclerosis develops over a period of time, okay, without any change in lifestyle, in diet, etc. No treatment, no management. Uh, please mention the page number from where you have got this abbreviation as well. Or anyone from the medical fraternity, if you understood the question, you can answer it. So is it clear, the development of atherosclerosis? It will take years and years, years and years of uh, sedentary lifestyle, high uh, LDL levels, okay? high cholesterol levels, high total cholesterol levels, years and years, continuously at least four to five years and years of development of, uh, of certain lifestyle uh, at risk factors which have not been changed, okay? Uh, it is not irreversible. In the initial stages, in the first stage, you can see here the first stage, in this stage only it is reversible. Otherwise, uh, we have certain... Um, angiography methods okay uh, first you first using the angiograph you have to understand where exactly the plague is okay then you uh, using the angio techniques using cardiac cath labs etc we can put a balloon here and inflate the balloon okay and uh, or you can give certain medications uh, like aspirin etc uh, so that that uh, that will decoagulate the uh, thrombus Okay, it will not allow the blood clot to form within the circulation. Aspirin is prescribed for that particular purpose. Okay. The mitral regurgitation. The blood regurgitation means the blood is supposed to go in one direction, but it tries, uh, but it falls back. Okay, it falls back. So is it clear about the development of atherosclerosis? So next coming to the treatment, that is a dietary management. Drugs, exercise, smoking cessation, Okay, these are the main principles of treatment what we follow. To overcome the to overcome the management of CBD disorders. Okay. So dietary uh, dietary management first. We go for a low calorie diet. The principle of diet diet here is usually a uh, hypertensive diet is also included here hypertensive diet means uh, uh, the low sodium diet okay that is what we call as uh, diet for hypertension okay so that is that treatment modality is also followed here so first of all it has to be a low calorie diet low calorie diet low trans fat diet low saturated fat diet low cholesterol high in pufa what is the full form of pufa high pufa diet Yes, polyunsaturated fatty acids, that is your omega-6 and omega-3, okay? So these abbreviations, please be aware of these abbreviations for examination, okay? 
FODMAP, PUFA, DASH diet, etc. So the range, the range of four to ten is for omega six fatty acid. You don't have to worry much about omega six fatty acid because most of the cereals, grains, whatever you eat in Indian cuisine, okay, like your legumes, your beans, grains, pro, uh, proteins, rich food, all these are es uh, essentially high in omega six fatty acid. Okay, omega three is the one you have to focus more on. You have to focus uh, on a daily basis. Are you getting omega three or not? Okay, the vegetarian source is definitely your uh, flax seed, rape seed. Um, canola seed oil uh, canola oil etc okay uh, your ground nuts all or most of your nuts and seeds are rich in omega-3 okay that is for vegetarians for non-vegetarians your fish liver oil cod liver oil okay or any uh, fish wild fish sea fish okay sweet water fish okay all fishes are good sources of omega-3 fatty acid okay so the ratio is uh, uh, four to ten either either four or it, the range can up, uh, go up to ten not more than ten okay uh, so out of ten parts of ten parts of maximum we are speaking in maximum uh, units uh, ten out of ten parts of polyunsaturated fatty acid at least nine part should be omega-6 one part can be omega-3 okay so it's very difficult to incorporate this in day-to-day -day cuisine so for that we have special oils that are already in market okay we'll discuss about that later special oils that are already formulated in such way uh, it is sold it is manufactured in such way that it already has this particular ratio okay so you do not have to worry about incorporating omega-3 specifically in your cooking or diet okay the these are government regulated manufacturers of oils within the country and certain uh, certain ratios of omega-6 to omega-3 is maintained by these manufacturers okay then low carbohydrate diet normal amount of protein but if uh, they are hypertensive it is better to increase the amount of protein and high fiber diet because most most uh, most of the time it's not uh, it's not a general category, but most of the time it's seen that people who are overweight and obese do have much higher risk of CBD as compared to people who are on the leaner side. Okay, so this kind of diet will definitely do the weight management for them as well. Your most of your trans fat, saturated fat is low, cholesterol is low. Okay, your uh, polyunsaturated fat, fatty acid is high, carbohydrates is low protein intake is high, high fiber diet. So this is essentially your weight management diet as well. Okay. So before coming to fats, your total energy, whatever your BMI and whatever your activity level, uh, level requires, that kind of uh, energy level you can maintain based on your BMI, or you can even use the formulas which we use here in our classes. St. George and uh, Mifflin formula. For previous past students, they will understand. New students who have joined now, you will not understand it now. The, uh, the uh, chapter will come later in the future. At that time, you will understand these formulas. Okay, We'll discuss all those in detail. So those who have the textbook, please take page number 332. Those who have the textbook, please take the page number 332. Regarding your fats, as I have mentioned, omega-6 fatty acid is naturally found in most of the food and oils which you use in your kitchen, okay? So you don't have to actually worry about are you getting enough of omega-6 fatty acid or not, okay? So it is usually present in most of the uh, cooking vegetable oils as well as your uh, cereals, pulses, etc. They already have enough amount of omega-6 fatty acid. Okay, omega three fatty uh, omega three rich foods are given here. Examples are given here. You can note that down. Take a screenshot if necessary. 
सोयाबीन कैनोला ऑयल मैकरेल फ्लैक्स सीड किडनी बीन्स चिया सीड्स वॉलनट्स नॉट जस्ट वॉलनट एनी ऑफ योर नट इवन आलमंड इज अ गुड सोर्स ऑफ ओमेगा थ्री ओके ऑल योर नट्स एंड सीड्स आर गुड सोर्सेस ऑफ ओमेगा थ्री नॉट द बेस्ट बट गुड सोर्सेस ओके स्पिनेच सैलमन फिश सैलमन फिश इज नॉट इजिली अवेलेबल इन इंडिया ओके इट इज इट इज अ मोस्टली कॉन्टिनेंटल काइंड ऑफ फिश नॉट इजिली अवेलेबल इन इंडियन मार्केट्स मैकरल्स आर मैकरल सार्दीस ओके दे आर एबेंटली फाउंड इन इंडिया थ्रू आउट द कोस्टल रीजन in most of the indian uh, indian kitchen you will find all these oils most of these oils like sunflower oil sesame oil okay olive oil these are the oils which are usually seen in most of the indian uh, kitchens okay those who have the textbook please come to page number uh, 332 that you can find the table uh, 16.2 is it visible to all it's not on the slide those who have the textbook so from that which do which oil would you suggest for a at least three option you have to give them at least three option okay so now you have to think like a nutritionist or a dietitian you have a cvd patient okay based on this table what information you can give them what they have to avoid what they have to incorporate put it in the chat box you can take your time uh, your own time to analyze the numbers la stands for linoleic acid ala stands for alpha linoleic acid these are different types of omega Three fatty acids. You can take your time. Do the do your analysis from the table sixteen point two, which you will ask them to avoid, which you will suggest them to incorporate in their diet for a CVD patient. yes avoid coconut oil ghee palm kernel and suggest them mustard oil canola oil safflower oil yes vanaspati also to be avoided sunflower oil can be recommended because it has high amount of linoleic acid sunflower oil has high amount of linoleic acid it is recommended okay see uh, you have two options okay for coconut oil see coconut oil it is a mct okay uh, it's a medium chain triglyceride easy to digest okay so uh, based on this fat coconut oil is an mct it is easy to digest okay that is a true statement that statement is true absolutely there is no issue with that but does that make coconut oil best for cardiovascular patients that's the question it's easy to digest automatic means what all the parts of coconut oil will be that saturated fatty acid will be absorbed if it is digested if it will be absorbed 
it will go inside the bloodstream. So from the cardiovascular uh, patient's point of view, if the patient does not have a, a CVD risk, you can definitely suggest coconut oil. There is no issue with that, okay? No issue with coconut oil. If the patient does not have any heart disorders, they can continue having coconut oil. There is no issue, okay? So is the question clear about coconut oil? Even though it is an MCT, it will be broken down easily. If it is broken down easily, it will be absorbed easily. And you are treating a CBD patient here. Okay, it will definitely raise their cholesterol level. So here we are not seeing coconut oil in terms of MCT. We are not seeing it in terms of short chain, long chain or medium chain. We are seeing it in terms of is it a saturated fatty acid or not. Okay. And if it is a saturated fatty acid, what's the amount of saturated fat, high amount or low amount of saturated fatty acid it has? That's what we want to. Yeah, the best oil is your mustard oil, canola oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil. Okay. Groundnut oil is also good. Is okay. Groundnut and sesame seed oil, it's okay. Sunflower oil will not add any extra flavor of itself into your cooking. So that's the reason why it's one of the most popular oils, used, refined oils used at Indian cuisine. Okay. And next coming to stable, next coming to uh, table 16.3. See, only cold press oils, uh, cold press oils, I would not recommend you to use for cooking where heat is involved. What will happen when you expose cold press oil to heat? What will happen? Previous past students, you can answer. It loses its nutritive value. Okay. What, for whatever nutritive value you have used the cold press oil that is lost once once it is exposed to heat. Okay, so everything is lost. You have lost your entire money because see, cold press oil will come with a cost. Okay, you have paid that extra money for its nutritive value, but you use it for cooking, you expose it to high heat, there is no use of it. Okay. So I wouldn't recommend using cold press oil for cooking. If you want to just drizzle it over a salad, or something like that. If you want to drizzle it over a non-heated food, food uh, you which you have prepared, okay, like salad or um, chapati, which is not ho hot rice that is not hot. Okay, some some cold food. Okay, if you want to drizzle it, you can definitely go for that. Okay. Next, coming to the fats. Oleic acid is uh, is your uh, type of omega-3 fatty acid, okay? So high or, or oleic acid is the most high oleic acid is found in olive oil, okay? Good for cardiac health. For regular cooking, you can use uh, sunflower oil, mustard oil, sesame oil, okay? In um, From Indian cuisine point of view, I'm telling you. Sunflower oil, sesame oil, mustard oil, groundnut is okay. Okay. And if you can get canola oil, rapeseed oil, if you do not mind the smell and texture of olive oil, that is also fine. Okay. Yeah, refined, refined sunflower oil and refined oil, olive oil for day to day cooking, where or whenever you are deep frying, sometimes uh, once a week or something, when you're, when you're deep frying, for that, these oils are okay. Have a refined version as well. Refined version does come with fortification of some omega-3, omega-6 fatty acids as well. Okay. Refined ones that are sold in the market. Rice pan rice uh, rice, rice oil is medium to okay. 
because the the flavor profile of it the smoke profile and flavor profile of rice bran oil will not be accommodated by every family okay we do recommend sunflower oil because it does not have a flavor profile of its own and anyone from south indian cuisine to north indian east west okay, throughout the india most of the cuisines you can blindly go and use sunflower oil it will not change the texture or it will not add its own enhancement into the flavor of whatever you are cooking okay so whenever you are choosing the oil for your clients you have to understand their uh, flavor profile some people will run out of the kitchen but if they uh, if a seasoning of mustard oil is done okay like if you make a seasoning of mustard oil in front of a south indian they will not tolerate it okay sometimes north indians cannot tolerate the smell of coconut oil okay it completely depends on which part of the country you are from so for everyone sunflower oil works bit better and if you like continental foods etc olive oil can work for you as well okay yeah mixing of the oil we have a topic on that we'll come to that later pre mixed oils are already available in the market okay so next coming to table 16.3 next coming to table 16.3 these are the food items you may find some food items which they have mentioned in respect to uh, to the fat saturated fatty acid and cholesterol levels found okay so out of that which would you highly recommend and which would you ask your cvd client to avoid from the table those who have the textbook table 16.3 answer based on the total cholesterol value yes skimmed milk is recommended avoid organ meats yeah if the chicken without skin is recommended chicken without skin is also rich in protein okay chicken without skin is rich in protein as well and it has very low fat content the boneless chicken which you buy okay it it, it is rich in protein and it is uh, it is very less in fat so boneless chicken is recommended for cvd patients okay for their protein requirements if they are non vegetarians yeah fish is recommended fish has very low cholesterol value among all the non vegetarian food fish has very low cholesterol value it is even lower than the egg whole and egg yolk mutton still have a bit bit higher cholesterol as compared to fish but you can have mutton the boneless mutton one but do not uh, have do not indulge in the organ meat when you are having mutton avoid the mutton organs see next coming to table uh, table 16.5 table 16.5 page number 335 somebody had asked if you can if you can mix the oils or not what are the drawbacks first of all uh, going for the advantages let's discuss what are the drawbacks of mixing oil blended oils mixing oils what could be the drawback 
previous past students would would know the answer to this yes reduced shelf life you can't keep the oil as long as other oils it will definitely change the taste the flavor profile of your cuisine yeah if you are mixing it it at home density will be different yeah oils have different boiling points if you do not know the art of mixing oil definitely uh, it will affect your cooking time as well so blended oils is a concept that is quite new okay blended oils so these oils help in correcting your proportion of omega 6 and omega 3 fatty acid okay and to prevent your atherosclerosis that's the purpose of blended oils that came into existence okay so before you buy any a blended oil please look out for this egg mark logo given by fssai okay all the edible oils if it is blended oils they have mentioned it as blended oils please look out for the egg mark logo okay it means that it it has been certified uh, it has been okayed by the government of india for sale okay they have done their necessary test and it is beneficial for the population's health okay otherwise if the oil is been sold in the market without egg mark logo do not buy it okay they have not undergone sufficient test uh, test etc for the blended oils so government of india has permitted the mixture of two edible oils okay for the health of the for the cardiovascular health of the population with egg mark logo it is being sold in the market okay so coming back to table 16.5 those who have the textbook table 16.5 on page number 335 okay you will find certain ratios okay so you will find certain ratios for example let's take the first ratio gno is to mo what do you mean by gno and mo look at the table properly what is what is the meaning of gno mo they have given in short forms yeah groundnut oil is to mustard oil okay and the ratio is 3 is to 1 so how will you prepare it how will you prepare it 3 is to 1 Yeah, three parts of groundnut to one part of mustard. Okay. So that's how you, uh, you take care of the ratio part. So just follow the abbreviations that are given below. Okay. The most commonly used um, oils, which has high amount of uh, omega-3 is on your left side, which has high um, uh, amount of omega-6 is on, on the right side of the table. Okay, so use your uh, uh, abbreviations which they have already provided in the textbook uh, just under the table. You will understand which kind of uh, which kind of um, oil oil blends you can use in your cooking because mostly they have given uh, these oil combinations which have more or less similar boiling point. Okay, and more or less very similar way of blending. Okay, the density is uh, almost the same. Okay, so that kind of oils they have given. Uh, in this uh, in this example okay if you are storing it at home like for example you are mixing three parts and one part of uh, mustard oil three parts of groundnut oil you are mixing it at home uh, you have to be very careful about the shelf life okay it may be completely different from, from one person to another person based on the areas which you leave the humidity okay the weather the temperature of wherever you are currently residing that may affect the shelf life as well Okay, so it's better uh, if, if possible, if you can remember these values while cooking, you can take three teaspoons of groundnut oil and one teaspoon of mustard oil. Okay, like that, you can uh, make the preparation on the spot when you are cooking. Okay, you can do that. Yeah, N3 and N, 
uh, six which they have mentioned, that is omega-3 and omega-6. Don't get confused with that. N3 and N6 is omega-3 and omega-6. On top of the table, on the column, you will find it. It's omega-3 and omega-6. So all this diet therapy is the first line of treatment for your high blood cholesterol patients because only to an extent the drugs will help. Otherwise, you have to do lifestyle changes okay, to increase your lifespan. It's not like that. It's not like that. All the oils, oil, the see, groundnut oil, soybean oil, oil, the, all the oils mentioned here, these are vegetable oils. All the vegetable oils naturally have omega-6 fatty acid. Okay. And some have a very less amount of omega-3 fatty acid. And since we have already seen in our RDA, daily uh, recommended daily allowances, etc., on that we have seen a specific ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 we have to maintain. Okay, that is 4 is to 10 part of omega-6 and one part of omega-3 that we have to maintain in our daily diet. Okay, so for that, these oil combinations are given. ALNA is alpha-linoleic acid. Under omega-3 and omega-6, you have different types of omega-3, different types of omega-6. So linoleic acid, alpha-linoleic acid, oleic acid, okay, they all come under that category. These are fatty acids, okay? Is it clear about blended oils? How to deconstruct the table? Next, coming to low sodium diet. So the total calories for a day we recommend is 1,700. It's a general recommendation, but individually you have to calculate based on the subjective data. You have to calculate using various form formulas, etc. Please calculate what exactly the calorie requirement will be for your client. Okay, the 1,700 is just a general generalization or we can say keep the calories below 2000 kilocalories okay the calorie intake for a, a cardiovascular patient should be below 2000 kilocalories that can that that statement can also be used here okay so we recommend low sodium dry diet here no it's not only for cardiovascular diseases it's for recommended this uh, this ratio is recommended for everyone So low sodium diet uh, on table uh, 7, 16.7 on page number 337. You will find a table in which sodium content of food per 100 gram of different kind of fruits and vegetables, uh, cereals, pulses have been given. Okay. So uh, from, from the given table, which column would you recommend? From left to right, which column would you recommend for a cardiovascular patient? The leftmost one, okay? So just by looking, see now, now when you have to make a menu plan, okay, for a CVD patient, when you are going to make a menu plan, when you are going to give them the list of food that they can consume, okay? This is what you have to copy paste. The first left is what you have to copy paste. Okay, the entire menu plan, whatever you make for a CBD patient, it's from this particular leftmost column of table 16.7. Okay, so and what exactly you have to avoid, ask them to avoid? Maida has to be avoided because it leads to constipation. Okay, we are focusing on high fiber. Okay, we are focusing on a high fiber diet. If you remember from the dietary management, the last point was high fiber. So when you are recommending high fiber, you are supposed to take back maida. 
egg lobster beef okay could be avoided and from vegetable vegetarian uh, examples beetroot coriander leaves okay these can be avoided it has high sodium content naturally tea and coffee it can uh, uh, low low uh, not the uh, strong teas okay medium to light tea and coffee they can consume just two cups of tea or coffee a day tea and coffee it is not necessary to completely remove it from the diet tea or coffee they can consume but not the strong versions of tea or coffee light to medium tea and coffee they can consume keep it to just two cups a day not more than that okay next coming to functional foods so the first three uh, functional foods i have mentioned in green because all the greens most of all the greens yeah even even who have undergone bypass and stent after their hospitalization is done because uh, as soon as uh, as soon as the stent operation or bypass surgery soon after the stent bypass they will spend at least two weeks in hospitalization okay so a high, uh, an a, a anti hypertension diet and a cardiovascular diet will be given to them from the hospital itself okay in the ipd it is given to them after that when the patient is getting discharged that's when this kind of diet this kind of menu plan is recommended okay that the hospital nutritionist or the clinical clinical nutritionist whoever is the clinical nutritionist they will make a menu plan based on it and it will be given to the bypass patient after post surgery and at home care as a part of at home care so these are all the greens that are recommended for cardiovascular patients you can notice here coriander leaves they have not given okay coriander has high uh, sodium uh, content to it so apart from co uh, coriander you should not give okay it is uh, it is mentioned here but do not give because in the textbook we have mentioned coriander has high sodium intake to avoid that so broccoli uh, stinging needle I, I don't know what we call stinging needle in other languages if you can identify the image you can mention in the chat box fenugreek dill leaves perilla grass pea leaves leek leek is a french kind french uh, delicacy french uh, origin plant it's not that easily available in india okay amaranth leaves commonly seen throughout india purslain curry leaves curry leaves again curry leaves uh, you can dry it and make a powder of of it and it can, it can be given just uh, as it is okay the powder of curry leaves can be given as it is mixed with a uh, mix with lukewarm water first thing in the morning this can be given to cvd patients okay mint leaves spring onion chives punarnava etc i don't know the other names for these uh, greens okay you can google it as well so all these greens are rich in vitamin e carotenoids and vitamin c okay so these are the functional foods for vitamin e uh, all the dark green leafy vegetables okay carotenoids carotenoids and uh, beta carotene is found in all the yellow and orange colored fruits and vegetables along with green leafy vegetables and vitamin c is seen in all fresh fruits salads whatever salads you consume it has high amount of vitamin c and the green leafy vegetables also has vitamin c next coming to selenium all your grains mostly the brown rice okay the brown rice and the unpolished rice has the higher amount of selenium as compared to the polished white rice okay so selenium will leads to will lead to the production of glutathione that is an, a very powerful antioxidant uh, in in a human body okay so selenium leads to the production of glutathione and that's why selenium is recommended then soya protein uh, it ha it does not have trans fatty acid and it does not have much saturated fatty acid since it's a vegan product it's a plant based product it has no cholesterol okay uh, it acts similarly like milk uh, 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 like like your dairy um, like any any of the dairy product but but it does not have cholesterol aspect to it so soy milk soy protein is recommended for cbd patients 
then beans and uh, out of the beans this particular type of bean i'm not sure what it is called if any anyone can identify in uh, hindi what it is called i do not know but in english we call it pinto pinto beans but i don't know what we call it in hindi it's it's not rajma rajma is kidney beans rajma is called kidney beans in english pinto beans what is the other name of pinto beans in uh, hindi or other uh, other regional languages i am not aware of it those who know the name uh, whatever you call it in your regional language you can put it in the chat box as well so uh, out of all the beans options that a cvd patient has pinto beans is supposed to be the uh, most beneficial one in reducing the ldl levels ldl cholesterol blood uh, blood cholesterol levels so this is how the pinto beans looks like reddish uh, reddish stains here and there then all your fruits and vegetables high in uh, antioxidant okay so that, that's why the fruits and, fruits and uh, vegetables become a functional food functional food means that has a specific role in your diet okay functional food means these are the examples of uh, different kinds of food that has a specific role given to your disease condition okay based on your disease condition you are recommended this particular food because it has shown uh, based on the evidence based practices it has shown this particular food group will either elevate or diminish your signs and symptoms so fruits and vegetables they have high flavonols antioxidant rich okay especially red and uh, onions small cherry tomatoes you can see here in the um, image how the small cherry tomatoes look like okay most of the salads which you find in uh, some restaurants they give cherry tomatoes instead of the normal tomatoes what you use at home it's a very small breed of tomatoes so go for red onions as compared to white onions if you are dealing with a cbd patient next is garlic uh, this is usually seen in most of the households where uh, you have senior citizens or anyone who has a history of cardiovascular diseases garlic uh, garlic will be crushed and it uh, some amount of lukewarm water will be poured into it not hot water because hot water will destroy the antioxidants here so garlic crushed garlic first thing in the morning is taken by taken empty stomach okay by the cholesterol patients so it is supposed to reduce the cholesterol levels okay uh, does uh, has has anyone uh, tried this at home for your family member and have you seen any changes i guess for previous batch uh, batch uh, students we have recommended this so if any of the students are suffering from high ldl you can try this uh, as well and before you start uh, start trying this please check your blood cholesterol level so that we have a, a pre test and post test results so, so something we can say that okay and do not do any other lifestyle modification just consume garlic water and see if it shows any results or not okay so garlic consumption for a very extended period of time followed by modest reduction in cholesterol okay uh, it doesn't mean that you drink this garlic water and you increase your fat diet okay that, that's not how it works you have to re reduce Uh, am i audible is the screen visible am i audible is the screen visible now
Okay, so about garlic water, when you are trying this garlic water uh, trick, uh, do not uh, increase your fat intake, um, reduce it and then see the effect, okay? One clove or half a clove of garlic per day is sufficient. If you do, uh, if you overdo it, you may have a bad breath, so avoid that. Then nuts, yogurt, milk, okay, that can also be recommended. Then having tea, green tea. Green tea is rich in polyphenols. Polyphenols is a very, uh, a very potent antioxidant. Okay, so that's how it reduces CBD risk. And fenugreek and oats, even fenugreek water, just very similar to how you do, uh, do the garlic water. Overnight, fenugreek is soaked uh, in hot water and it is consumed in the morning. Or sometimes if you do not have time for overnight soaking, you can just... Uh, heat up the water and add um, fenugreek do not boil it completely okay just heat up the water a little bit when it starts sizzling the, when the water starts sizzling just shut it off close the water let the uh, fenugreek seep in okay for half an hour or so and then you can drink that uh, fenugreek water as well okay so that is also supposed to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease and also reduce the cholesterol levels And oats are high in fiber. So oats is a fiber-rich diet. Oats as a breakfast option is also good. Garlic should not be soaked overnight. Okay, Half a clove of garlic or garlic or one clove. Uh, just crush it. Just add lukewarm water to it. Okay, uh, keep it, uh, uh, let's just keep it there uh, untouched for a few minutes, five to 10 minutes and then drink it. Okay, no need to soak the garlic overnight. So these are the functional foods one can have for, one, one can recommend for CHD patients. Then we have DASH diet. So DASH diet, uh, these are the servings which we give for a DASH diet. First, see what a DASH diet is. First, we'll see how, what is the servings given in DASH diet. We'll see what a DASH diet means, okay? So if you divide the entire plate of a CBD patient for their heart health, okay, uh, six to eight servings per day of whole grains, okay, four to five servings of vegetables throughout the day. Fruits also separate four to five uh, servings. It's not like four to five servings of fruits and vegetables, okay, four to five separate servings of fruits, separate servings of vegetables. Fat-free low di dairy, that is skimmed milk, or uh, you can go for the vegan milks as well. Fats and oils, vegetable fats and oils, just two to three servings. Sweets, less than, sweets and desserts, less than th uh, three servings per week. Okay, you, you, please for, uh, concentrate on days and week, which they have mentioned here. Poultry, lean meat and fish, less than six servings per day, just for your protein requirement. Low fat protein requirement, go for meat, okay. Otherwise, you can also go for plant-based protein, which will not have at, uh, cholesterol levels at all. Then servings per week for uh, nuts and seeds, five to four to five servings of nuts and seeds and legumes per week. Okay, so this is what we give in a DASH diet. So what does diet, DASH diet mean? So it's dietary approaches to stop hypertension, the full form of DASH. This can also come in exam the abbreviation of DASH diet, dietary approaches to stop hypertension. It has been shown to help lower blood pressure and prevent heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and even some form of cancer. So it focuses on eating more fresh fruits and vegetables, cutting down your uh, cholesterol-based meat products, okay, uh, increasing your protein, okay, uh, and uh, also re reducing your carbohydrates. Carbohydrate servings are also quite low. And completely removing your desserts and sweets. It is the servings is per week, per not per day. So the guide of dash diet is always based on eating 200 2000 calories or below 2000 calories. Usually, when we recommend calories for CVD patients, it's always keep the calories below 2000. 
don't go beyond 2000 kilocalories per day. That's what we generally recommend for CVD patients. So DASH diet, know the, uh, know the main abbreviation, okay? And what are we focusing more on DASH diet? We are focusing more on fruits and vegetables, high fiber, okay? Low calories, low fats, and low, uh, low to zero cholesterol. That is what we are focusing on, DASH diet. Yeah, um, the packaged items or flavored oats are not recommended. They ha naturally have high sodium levels, okay? If you read the ingredients of flavored oats, which are uh, available in market, just read the uh, amount of sodium which they have. So that will make you avoid the ready-made uh, oats. So regarding wine, okay, regarding wine for heart health, so recent analysis and studies have found that Optimum daily intake of wine to be one glass. One glass here, it means 150 ml for women. And for men, they can take two glasses, at least 300 ml for men. Okay. So drinking this particular moderate amount of wine is associated, associated with various uh, health benefits, not just heart, but various uh, health benefits. So it boosts your heart health. It raises the omega-3 fatty acid in the diet, prevents breast, breast cancer, prevents sunburn, boosts your brain health and reduces stress, prevents obesity. It's good for anti-aging it, because it is rich in antioxidants. Okay, Red wine is rich in antioxidant. That's how it benefits anti-aging. It fights diabetics as well. Okay, So remember, only 150 ml for women red wine per day, daily intake per day, and 300 ml for men. Next is Mediterranean diet. Those who are from the pre previous batch, uh, what are the main aspects of Mediterranean diet? Main aspects of Mediterranean diet. What oil is used here? What kind of fat or oil is used here? Most of the cooking is based on olive oil, okay? It includes red wine on a daily basis. Mediterranean diet includes red wine on a daily basis. It's not low on meat, okay? It, they have meat, but more than meat, they focus on fish and seafood. They have meat, but it, the focus is more on fish and seafood. They have whole grains, okay? Mostly they do not use refined flours. They use whole grains as much as possible. Variety of fruits and vegetables, okay? Oil, uh, olive oil is the main cooking medium of fat used here. And daily physical activity will be there, okay? Eating with the family is optional based on your lifestyle. So on a daily basis, they have fruits and vegetables, weekly basis, meat and fish and seafood, okay? And occasionally, they will indulge in deserts, okay? That's Mediterranean diet. 